I just want to let you know you have rather given me a message. Amen. And uh, you can't get any message sounder to you than God telling you nothing is difficult for him. I receive it. Amen. That's God to me. I receive it. Thank you, God. I believe your word. And let it be unto your handmaid as you wish. Amen. Nothing is impossible with you. Amen. Can the church say amen? Amen. Oh. Yeah. I don't know. It's up to my children leaders. And uh, if you want to be around today, I will grant it. But uh, I won't control it too. So... It's all up to you. Which one do I go? Wave to me. You want to be around. Thank you. So, so please make a, a make a orchestration to contain them. You want to go? Okay. Oh, your leader says no, so I will take it from your leader. I'm sorry. I don't mean to distort you. The leader department says no, so I will go by that. Sorry. Um, let, let, let's just be on our feet. Hey, yes, so many are here. Be here and sunny, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, you want money? I don't mind, cause yeah. Yes, so many are here. Oh, you want money? There is nothing too hard. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. That's what it means. We serve a God who is wonderful. Yes, so many are here. Oh, you want me? Yeah. Keep your ransom. Now we make us say, Oh, you want me? Let's repeat that. Let's repeat that. Yes, so now me. Oh, you want me? Keep your receive our praise and our worship. We give it all to you because you alone deserve it. We will not give it to any other entity. It is for you. And we look to you for our food, our water. We thank you in Jesus' name. And let glory and honor be ascribed to the only one that worth to receive our praise. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Please, let's be seated. Please. We thank God for this morning. And uh, we're going straight to the point, uh, which is our subject for the day. And uh, worship. And I team it as worship is funnel. Worship is the funnel. Let me bring in the day. The day even specify how we have no other way. Worship is the founder. Worship is the founder. Hallelujah. Amen. What worship, let's first of all ask ourselves what it is and that became the founder. Um, worship 
is where the whole soul, when you talk of the whole soul, now my soul, it comprises of your mind, your body, your interests, and everything that makes you the Kwame, the Kwesi, the Abuna, the Ajua, the Samuel, and all the names I can call one after the other. That is your soul. And that soul, that soul is what God demands him to worship him. And that what God demands from that soul is to be committed to him. Is to give everything to him. Everything. Nothing holding back. Sometimes we can do others by holding back some things and God will ignore them. But when it comes to worship, he doesn't want anything to be held back. Everything must go to him. That is what is worship. And that is why it is the funnel. It is the funnel means when we get there, we get to the, the climax, the peak, the level at which God doesn't look for anything else again. Worship is the finals of finals. Worship is the all. It's all and all that God demands from his saints or his children. Now, let, let, let's see from the text we read this morning, according to the Bible, we say, You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. And were created. That is our worship there. That is it is given to him because it's for him. It is given to him without holding anything back because if you do, you end up being unsincere. You end up being ungrateful. You end up not appreciating what the Lord has done for you. He is the very one that has given you the free air to breathe. He is the very one that has created the world and all that therein. He is the very one that has exalted you among creating things. And you have dominion and power over all of them. And you are special just because you are like him. You are made in his image. So when God comes to the garden, when God comes to your life, when God comes to your place of location of abode, all that he needs from you is your commitment. Your commitment that's to worship him. You see, I, I was watching the Olympic game and the world this thing and that and that and the rest. And last, for the first time, they were interviewing or same boat. And he was saying that he takes the whole 360 days to prepare for just one race. So he doesn't raise and afterwards go and sit down and wait for the next thing. No, he goes and over and over and over just for 100 meters. And so, you see, that is the reason why I think about it. What worship entails and preparation for worship, and that will help you. That's the reason why in those days, God set aside a place. A place where that alone he receives worship. And he told the Israelites, go to the mountains. The mountains was at Jerusalem. And he said, Jerusalem was at the southern side of Israel. So think about those that were in the northern side of Israel, let's say the Galilee and the downwards. They take number of days to walk. They take number of days to walk. And whilst they are walking, when they get tired on the road, they have no option than to continue. They walk not just the persons alone, they walk with their sacrifice clean on their back. Some being the goat, some being the sheep, some being the rest that demands in worship. And they will walk not less than days, but days of days to get to Jerusalem on the particular place meant for worship and then go and put their sacrifice at the feet of altar through the priests that represent God. It tells a lot of commitment. 
And it needs a lot of preparation. It needs people setting themselves aside. You know, some also make ready the goat that they will give for the sacrifice. They rear it themselves. Or they go and deposit at the place that goat were meant for sacrifice. In order to get the special one. So that when they go, the priest will not examine and have one eye broken goat. So they put a lot into it. Worship is not just I walk in today and I feel they were singing very well so I, I was also emotionally moved. No, worship is an individualistic affair where one sit down to make a decision, to decide for himself what the Lord has done, I will also give it all. So when people and the church and saints understand worship, trust me, talking minimizes. Because outwardly, inwardly, outwardly, people up and give all to God without holding back. It's a commitment means you put yourself into it. It's not something you just walk through. The, no, you put something into it. There is an effort. There is a bloodshed there. Worship is so much. Listen to me. Had Christ not come to modernize or modify or better sacrifice, which is worship that they used to do in those days, trust me, I don't know who would have wept to give worship. And so that's why we look to Jesus and we come to him with our crowns and we say, God, with what you have done for us, you have simplified it, you have cut it short, you have saved us, you have done so much. So please take it and present it to Father for us. And that is why we are going to read today and see the image where when God was demanding worship, he revealed to uh, Apostle Paul, the saint special, that God kept him for a reason. The Bible says most of the disciples were killed by sword and so many, he said, Matai. You know, there were so many destructive deaths. But when he got to John's time, because he was a worshiper, the Bible said at a point in time, they did all what they came to kill him and did not succeed. So the Bible says the people of his days, the authority, they put him in an oil. An oil. And they bore him just to, is that fly? Fly him like a plantain. And yet, it did not work. He did not die. So he said, we don't know what to do with you anymore. So the Bible said, they put him, they isolated him. That is about holiness, separation. They took him aside the place that no man can see him. That was an island of what? Patmos. And the Bible says it was there that the Lord revealed himself to him. You see, that means worship is separation. That is why in worship, our most and our regular language is holy, holy. Say with me, holy, 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 shout holy. Holy means I am separated for you. Holy means all this money when I had at the end of the week, I took part and that part that I'm going to give to God doesn't belong to me. So he's holy. Holy means set aside. Holy means separated. Holy means located and meant for God alone. Give him a praise and worship. So you will wonder to see that you are holy. What do I mean? We have about 320 million population on the face of the United States of America. But you alone is here today worshiping and calling consistently and consecutively the name of the Lord means you are holy. You are holy not just because you are holy, but you are holy because God through Jesus has set you aside to present you before him as a sacrifice. So all we have is to tell him, you've done a good job, God. When we tell you you've done a good job, when we tell you you are holy, when we tell you you are wonderful, like he was saying, I'm young, 70, and yet people were ascribing 35 to me. He said, worship. He's saying that when I got to know him and I did not give my life to the worldly woman, the harrows and the prostitute, and because God, I gave it all unto you, because I fell in romance with you and not in the world, you kept me. That is a worship there. 
When you walk in here and you bring your money, you, I mean, I'm saying worship is a commitment. Worship is not an empty-handed thing. Worship is not free thing. Worship is not things that doesn't cost you. If worship doesn't cost you, you haven't worshipped. It can cause your image. It can cause your reputation. It can cause your state of life. Listen, worship has an implication of testing your very character. It can challenge you. It can stretch you and bring out your character to see that whether you will fit it or not. Look at Papa Abraham. For somebody to walk for three days, he was testing his character, not just looking for his Isaac. He was saying he would go back and say, I didn't see the praise just because I love Isaac. Say, I'm going to put Isaac and you before me and see which one you will choose. So when it comes to worship, it's a main location only for God and not for anything. And when we do that, you will see at the end of it what it brings to us. You see, let, let's just read this reading and you will see the image. God made John had a picture of what worship is about. And so let's read, and I know you coming from this side of the world. Papa Trump was saying that before he would give his green card to anybody that will come to the United States of America, if you can't speak English, they should not give it to you. I think I support him. I think he is right with that. So I just meant to understand that everybody in this place must at least have his sense explanatory to understand common English. And as I'm reading, I know you even understand better than me. Can I hear amen? Yes. Let's see something from the book of uh, Revelation chapter 4. Hopefully I'm a reader or I'm, whatever I get to, we will work with it. Let's start from right verses 1 and you will see some good stuff there. You can read with me as well because the word of God is powerful. Let's do today something special to Jesus. Can we stand on our feet, please? I don't mean to disturb you. I mean to let you be blessed. Can I hear amen? amen. Are you mad with me? Let me get better amen. amen. Thank you so very much. Let's go, girl. After these things, I look and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a transpit speaking with me, saying, Come up here and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven. On one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardius stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw a 24 elder sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns, gold on their heads, and from the throne proceeding lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne, there was a sea of glass like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. Wonderful. The first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. The third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a frying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, go, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Oh, man. 
Let's read there again, and let's read with indication and screen and uh, I mean, I mean, punctuation. Go, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Wow. Let's go. Go. Thank you. Whenever the living creature is giving glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they exist and were created. Give a worship to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Church be seated. I, I, I have noticed one thing. Papa Trump doesn't love by heart. If you have noticed that. But one day I uh, saw the just gone away Mi Mi Michi. Michi was saying, I love Trump. I love Trump. I, and I saw his face was saying, Yes, me too. I love you. You see, that's a worship day. I'm coming to give you a close example. That's a worship day. You nobody, no matter how the person is, worship can break him. Worship can break anybody. And that is what he's talking about. This one, he was not talking about little, little people. See, that's why he used the word edis. Edis means that people with image, people with reputation, people that have succeeded in life. So if you sit there and you think you are a president, you are a worthy person, so you have to be gentle, you, you got to be careful. Look, let me tell you, God sits there and he says, just go on and be careful. And when one day I take the breath from you, you will be careful somewhere. And may God forbid that. He said, these people did not hold back anything. They came, listen to me, and they laid their crowns, their crowns, their wealth, their reward, the achievements that they have made in this world. That's why I'm saying that those people wasn't common people. Excuse me. Maybe you have not made anything. Maybe you have not done any achievement that you can even be recognized in this country. That time he was talking about people that have made their marks. And he was saying those people that have made their mark, they came and then they bow and they say, God, we have little, little crowns. They said they were first sitting on the throne. Is that what he says? Because if you have not make a mark, you can't sit on certain particular throne. So with their position and their, you mean, what we call in G, their deviality, their position in life, their, their, their level, I'm looking for a word, they are their status and the rest. So the rest were all there, but they alone were mentioned because they were sitting in a high level, high place. Better than probably uh, DC. And the Bible says, as soon as the king of kings entered, he had a higher seat than this. And so as soon as he sat in his throne, then these rest of 24 elders and all the spirits that we read, they said they all woke up and they rather went to him and then they bowed to him. And then they took off their crowns and said, we will put it at his feet. We bow down, we lay our crowns out the feet of Jesus. There's choral says, we say, Holy, holy, oh, we sing, holy, oh, we, oh, we, he, he is there. You see, they couldn't control. As soon as the most and all of the powerful, the king of kings came in, they all woke up and they walked to him and they bow at his feet. So if you don't know any how to worship, that alone is enough for you. It means that I am before the greater. 
I am before the one who is much higher in authority than I. I am before the one that without him I am nothing. So let me give all unto him. They said they took their crowns. That means we have a crown, but our crown is lesser to his. You can be president. You can be anything. You can be powerful. You can be rich, but it's lesser to the most highest Papa Jesus. Thank you. So they said, and they put it and they laid it before him. I was watching uh, last, uh, last week when they had the race, especially the 100 meters at the world race in, going on in London. And then uh, for the first time in history, there was one guy, American, 35 years old, who beat Ose Bolt powerfully. And another one also beat him. So I was looking at this guy going to rejoice. And when he saw us able to come, he bowed down. He said, Master, I did it today, but you are the man. That's a worship there. Where do people recognize who is above them? Where do people know who has the reputation and therefore we don't have to joke with? Yesterday, they were interviewing someone on the CNN. Excuse me, he was a black. And after all, the white spoke. And then he spoke and he said, yes, you have spoken well. And they called his name. He said, don't call my name, I'm a doctor. And so the guy, the journalist have to call back and call his name. I said, yes, that's the world goes for you there. Well, go to the police station and go and call with tenant couple. Are you getting it? They don't joke with the position. When his couple, give his couple to him. When his lieutenant, give his lieutenant to him. Some people even die and they give them measures. And they go and put the measure on their, uh, at the graveyard. It's an honor to them. So I'm talking about where it comes, it matters. We don't got to reduce Jesus. We don't got to reduce God. We got to give his honor to him. And that is where we worship him. That is where we don't keep anything. Do you know some people may be saying, and Sapphira and, uh, uh, and is that Ananias fell dead because they kept back some balance. Listen to me. Some people, it is just by the grace of God, are still falling dead because they keep some honor. And God sees them that even though you say you are holy, you kept something that is trouble. You kept something from me. So I am coming and I'm exhorting the church and admonishing the church that when we come, no one should hold anything. Sometimes some of you feel shy of me. So when I see some things about you, I don't want to mention. But I saw some expression this morning. One particular woman, I have never seen her dancing in this church. But first in geography. Geography means first in a particular location. I saw her and him jumping and rolling everywhere. I said, oh, praise the Lord. This is not self-orchestration. This is a move. This is heart acting. You see, when praise and worship is coming from man, that is where praises leader will say, let's stand up. Nobody should have a control to tell you to stand up. You will be moved from within. Have you seen where <laughs> those days that Bob Marley and the rest were there? When they go to dance and it gets to it, Bob sound, no one tells you that wake up. You will just hear, tin, 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 tin. oh yeah, oh, you will hear everywhere. Hey. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness. Spontaneously, everybody will hear. And then they will come to church and they say, get up, stand up, shout. Oh, my goodness. Can we keep in something from someone? Somebody was telling me one day, and they said, uh, you, you all want to go to heaven, so let's be serious and work for heaven. And he said, excuse me, the most stupid things I've heard in my ear. He said, no, I don't want to go to heaven. I want to go where I will meet Bob Marley. I'm told, no, whether Bob Marley is in hell, why he said that, but I don't believe so. Because that hell is not meant for human beings. Hell is made for demons. Because it's a dangerous place. You know why he was saying that? He, because he was saying that heaven will be boiling. And where the great ones have gone, the Rastafarians, the people of the world have been, they will be chilling. You are sorry. If there really lives 
and you think it is Mackey Jackson on the rest. I'm not saying they are there. Let them tell you where it is. You remember that rich man? He called on the top of his voice. He said, Papa Abraham, please give me somebody and let him go and tell my family people that richness and joy is not when you are in the earth chilling because I am in trouble. But here, John saw in heavens, he saw in heavens, it's an indication that he was catching the picture for you and I. So that we will see what will go on there. And you know, when worship goes, hey, when worship goes, blessings falls down, people broken, God meets people at their level. There is a power. Worship, I personally call it a motivation. Motivation to set you for your blessings. Motivation for things to happen in your life. Listen, do worship and see. And when we talk about worship, I say it is your everything. Listen, listen to me. If your soul is you, and you have to give worship, then what about your money? Then your money is nothing. That is why when you complete worship is the fun now. When the worship is coming from the soul, nobody will compare people to give. Nobody will compare people to come to church on tap. Nobody will tell somebody, get up and dance. Or, no, 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 no. It becomes something obvious. It becomes something by itself. It becomes something that Jesus told the woman at the well. He said, out of where the berry shall throw waters of living. Hallelujah. So we are dealing with a subject, as I said, by reading and with your understanding in English. I know most of you have got it better than I can explain. Because I know the presence of God is here interpreting himself to you. Amen. Worship is pulling out to God. Worship is getting committed. Worship is putting in something. Worship is, I don't feel like, but David said, my soul. Praise the Lord. That means I have a command. I have, there is a demand on my head to praise you or to worship you, whether I like it or not. Hallelujah. You, you see, when we wo worship God, we start, God has put so much into us. So he is waiting to take whatever he has given us. So worship is not a conditioner. If some people think worship is a condition, it's, I don't feel like it's I feel like it is something I want to, I don't want to know. That's why it doesn't have anything to do with your American democracy. Worship is a command. It's something you have to. You have to. You see, when sometimes worship is not brought to God, God can demand it by force. And sit down, wise people. Don't God force you to get something for you. Be miserable. So that is why you got to give it all by yourself. You see, when worship is being tempted, when people want to take worship from God, God jumps in himself. I'm telling you. He jumped in himself. That is why he said in the book of Isaiah, he said, my glory will I share with no man. If you read the book of Genesis chapter, uh, read on your own, the book of Genesis, especially chapter, uh, what do you call it? In the book of Genesis, where God told Abraham to give his son, Isaac, read this on your own. The book of John 4 and the book of Genesis chapter 22. It became so demanding. Jesus even told the woman that give me the water. Why didn't Jesus give her straight away? He wanted something from her. Meaning that if I have wasted my time to walk all this journey to come to where you are, you have to show it. You have to worship me. And the Bible says when the woman understood and did what Jesus was expecting, Jesus gave her more. So I'm telling you, as for worship, it's a command. It's a command that goes to wise people who says, I won't wait to be forced till I give. And when worship is denied, God can sometimes jump into it. That may give you a typical example. The Bible says at a point in time, God was blessing a particular nation. And then when it came to the time, that nation, because God permitted the Israelites to go into slavery to Babylon, the Bible says it was God's permission. So it was God who granted Babylon's king, the book at Nazar, to become very powerful. And then he saw and he said, look at how powerful I have become. 
the Bible says as soon as he came back to his parish, then he fell down. He couldn't walk like a human being again. And he walked to the bush. Do you know that story? The Bible says the book had never became like an animal in the bush for a while. Until he came to his senses and gave worship to God. And God turned him around and brought him back to the parish. You see, when you want to joke with God, worship, that one God has no sympathy, God has no heart to be, to, to be nice with the people who deny him with worship. I have another instance. Have you heard of King Herod? Bible says at a point in time he, he, he proclaimed worship for himself. That it is by his wisdom his kingdom has succeeded so much. Bible says he fell down from his back and as soon as he got on the ground he started rotting. Isn't in Bible? Yes. So as for worship, let me tell you, if you are a healthy man and you come to church and you say you reserve your strength, but when you go to work, you go and use it to work for America for dollars, I'm telling you, sometimes God can put impediments in your way. May he forbid. God looks to us that whatever he has given to us, we give it back to him. God is not demanding worship just because he is comparing us for nothing. He knows he has fixed us. He has fixed us a well. He has granted us a visa to be in the United States of America. He has made us a portion. Excuse me to say that some people come from this very country of rich and surplus in economy. And yet they are homeless. They stand by the road begging. But you, some of you maybe might not have a green paper and let alone your yellow and let alone even documents. But yet you are sound and better than someone there. Do you have to be advised that you should worship God? In other words, do you have to be advised that you should give to God? In other words, do you have to be told that when you come to church, show it. Show it means, you know that when you come to give offering, it's like you are bringing your crown. You are putting your crown at his feet. I have a typical example. Let me share it with you. You know, when I went to, in Ghana, by the grace of God, I've got Christian schools. And the school that was in Accra, somewhere 2002, they were going to have a sports. So I went and I took a design of Jesse myself. And I gave it to my school team. And then that time, these Ghana boys, they don't use boots to pray uh, at Soccer game. Even the high team were not having a let alone school team. But I gave them the best of mine. Then I promised them, if you win this cup for me, next year I will buy you soccer boots. Not knowing it has went into their head. Because someone was telling me, when they, they brought the cup, and when they brought the cup, they laid the cup at my feet. And they, when they brought the cup, that was where I saw that being a school proprietor is a joy. They were singing for me. How many? Also for some many. They were calling my name, singing, rejoicing, and they brought the cup, the cup that the whole Tema district they won. And then they asked one boy who scored the goal last minute. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Da, da Koska. They asked him Da Koska. The ball was such that it shouldn't have been a goal ball. Why do you score? He said, when we were going, the letter told us next year you will buy us a boot. So I didn't care whatever will happen to me. I just wanted the ball to be in the net. According to those that went to the game, the way the boy jumped together with everything and slid the ball into the net, all he was looking was for boot. Hallelujah. And do you think I would disappoint these people? I blessed them something more than boot. That very year, I said, of course, I'm giving you full scholarship. I gave her the boots, I gave I had the scholarship to it and the rest. You see, when, when we see what God has done for us, and we give our best to him, he gives him glory, he brings him a cup. He puts the crown at his feet. And that's what God will not joke with. And let me tell you another instance. When I went to Brekum and they were going to play the soccer game the same time, that was the school my wife was leading. I guess your children attended Good Start. I have somebody there. We, I even came to know him in U.S. here. And he said, Sofo, I knew you at Brekum. I said, why do you know me? I said, my child attended your school. I said, look at it. Far, 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 far. We had one of the best in Brekum District. And listen, it was a sports game. 
I took all my time off. I bought them the best sports case and everything. And when the children were going, to, we, we took about one week. We were not studying, just training, 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 training. And I was coaching them myself. So on that D-Day, I wear my T-shirt, my coat, my coach his dress and everything. We went to the game and I led my assistant coach to stand at the touch line and I sat behind quietly. Then there was a team in Breku, no one beat them. We played the game up to the finals and it went to penalty because he was in the team that day. And then when you got to the penalty, they kick into our net. Then we kick into their net. They kick into our net. We kick into their net. Then that was the last one. They have to keep for the cup to be lifted. We kick the ball, then straight into the net. Then the referee said, no. The person moved before kick. We kick the second one into the net. The referee says, no. There was a 40 there. The people rushed close. So then he wants them to keep the third one. Come on. I just jump in. I say, hey, child, children, come on. Come on. Go and join the car. The game is over. You want to cheat us? No. The team owner is here. I said, get into the car. And when you see my children dressing, we went to the field. When you see the school, you see our everything, our car we went with and everything, you will see that this is a school that belongs to someone. And then when we came home, I said, make party for them. Serve them. Did everything for them. And you know what? Then when we were walking from the field, Someone said, please, pastor, let them go and kick again. I said, no, they are not kicking again. You are provoking me. You want to cheat us. I hate it. So we don't go to pray. He said, oh, pastor, this is just a, a game. I said, who told you it is a game? Do you know how much I put into it? Do you know how much I put into this game? Hallelujah. And then from there, soccer didn't succeed anything better there from there. Let me tell you. You see, when God, someone wants to deprive us from our, what do you mean, worship, what belongs to us, God jumps in. I'm telling you. If God has put so much into you and wants you to be great and someone wants to stand in between, that time God's gentility is put aside and he jumps in. He jumps in. He jumps in. So, uh, I mean, all what we're looking for, I have been a boss to so many things, and I know all what we look for. All what we look for is our sector will be successful, and then they will ascribe, they will ascribe the success to our leadership. That's what worship is about. God has created the universe. It is like a team. It belongs to him. All what God is looking for is that we will come to him. That is the meaning of laying down our crowns. Some of you will be surprised that you are a team so so and so just because you are the wealthy income earner here. That's your crown. Some of you pray organ very well. That's your crown. Some of you know some things that others doesn't know. So when we come to church and we put them together and we are jumping and bowing down, it's like we put all those gifts before the Lord. We put them before you. We put them at his feet. We put them at his feet. We put them at his feet. We serve the nation that we even happen to belong to. Today I'm talking about soccer and so many things that come in mind. Do you know that it was when I went to school, um, when I went to Brunhafo, Brekum raised in all soccer level. Asna, I was strongly behind Asna. Do you know some of you know Brekum Asna, Yakubu? I was strongly behind us now. It was when I was in Brecum that I orchestrated Chelsea. And up to now, they were stronghold in Ghana soccer. And you know, when one time we went to fasting and prayers and Nasna was coming to pray with Asante Kotoko in Brecum, that time Kotoko had never beaten Nasna. They, Asna used to beat them both home and away. And because I happened to be in Brecum, then I said, no, let me be nice to the team that is me. But personally, by his grace, I am an Asante Kotoko supporter. <laughs> so I told my woman in the church, we carry water mirror and the whole rest. And we went to donate to the Arsenal team at Brecum Golden Park. That was a Saturday and the match was 
supposed to be prayed on Sunday. They received this. They went on FM. They praised me for being nice. Because when you live in a particular country, you use your gift to bless them. And behold, that was my trouble. On the Sunday, first time in history, then Asantokoto came to beat us now in Brekum one day. Oh, my goodness. From that day, I said I will separate pastor from soccer. They went to the FM everywhere in Ghana. That Asante Kotoko make juju, and they gave it to me through that. I brought them the food, and that's why they lost. Oh, I'm saying this thing simple. It wasn't simple. I will be walking on the street, and they will be pointing at me. Pointing at me. I said, oh, I don't know anything about this. So. And yet, Yakubu will come to me in the house, come and tell me, Pastor, some sportsmen, we need some help. I said, is that how you will treat me from there? That's when I jumped away and we went to form Onyamie. It was Onyamie that became Chelsea. You see, we do things just to be recognized. We don't do things for people to despise us. When we do things and people praises us, we get chance to do better. I just recently had a call from Brekum that um, Yakubu says when I come back to Ghana, that is the Chelsea manager. He wants to see me because he wants me to team with him to bring Chelsea back to premiership. And I tell you, I will do it. When I go back to Ghana, I'm going to sit with Yakubu. I won't mind taking back the team because it comes from my town. I want the team to come back to premiership. And I'm promising you, church, watch and see. One day, we will have a team in America here that we will play MLS. I mean it. It's on my heart. I will do this. I will do this. I mean it. <laughs> We're going to have our academy set it up. And we will join and pray. I'm telling you. We will take the American MLS. This is by the way, anyway. We're talking about crowns. Crowns are won after a game. So God, God wants us to lay crowns before him. God wants us to see greatness where he has brought us. And that is about worship. I don't have more way to describe worship than it will be. Now, let, let me take you through three things when we worship God is in mind. The first is motivation, motivation, motivation. Uh, you all know motivation. You see, worship psychs us. Worship sets us up that God is about to do something great. Listen to me. When the Israelites left Egypt, the Bible says when they got to the promise, when they got to the middle at, at Sinai, the Bible says God told Moses when he gave them the Ten Commandments, God told Moses that, listen, you people are just coming from where? Egypt. You saw them how they worship their gods. But I want to tell you in the first ten commandments, do not worship any other god aside what me. That was the ten commandments. When you read the ten commandments, that is Gen uh, Genesis chapter 20. You, excuse me, Exodus chapter 20, you will see it there. About the ten commandments. He said, do not. So God was saying that I am the one who delivered you from the hands of that means God was demanding his worship. That means God was putting a picture before them that if you people are pumped up and you let it be about me but not about any other thing, I have something good in mind. Can I hear amen? That is what worship is about. Worship will motivate you to get the best from God. So he said, let do you people know from today, this is my commandments I'm giving to you. When you go to the promised land, all worship must only be ascribed to me. Don't give it to any other images, any, any deity. It should come to me only. So please, what was God saying? He said, for when you do that, I will bless you. I will bless you. That was the motivation. He said, I want to encourage you, do worship. Listen to me, church. Do worship. What do I mean by give all unto God? What do I mean by lay his crowns at his feet? Don't hold anything back. I always tell my children, my whole family, they will tell you, everyone, 
Even a few I was walking with him. Sometimes I make walking with him. And then on the way, uh, well, with her. And then on the way, I asked her, Fia, tell me some of your plans. She said, Dad, this, this, this. You see them like that. They all have plans. I said, tell me more. And she spoke for a while. And after I listened, then I also started showing her the ways to God. The ways to God. I said, when you do this, this will come. When you do this, this will come. When you do this, this will come. Even in our children, we motivate them. We tell them, when you pass these exams for me, I, I will buy you this. Whether they are that age or not, it becomes their target. So let me tell you, God has put something before you worship. That when you do it well, heavens will break loose for you because you have put him first. So anytime we come to church, let it be like, I'm going to worship God. Not that we are, put, we, we are making power power with God. And what do I mean by power power is we, we are gambling with him, loto, I mean lottery. I put in 10 and get 20. No, that's not what I'm saying. But there also, we have to be committed. And it is worship that was psychic. God in the Ten Commandments was psyching his people. That if you don't joke with worship and you do worship properly, the whole earth will hear about you. And he meant it too. Worship will put you there. Will put you close to God. But this is where the devil will interrupt it. This is where the devil will sometimes let you feel, I don't feel like. This is where sometimes the devil will let you feel, <laughs> me, me, I am the pastor. If you ask for a pastor, I have to be gentle. I have to clap. I have to be nice. Hey, Pastor Domba, who told you? He said, and the 12, I mean, 24 elders, the most of the con congregation, they bow down and they lay their crowns at the feet of Jesus. Do you think they will wake up and go the same? What did they put at the feet of Jesus? The golden crown. You are just holding back dollar. You are just looking around. <laughs> Some gentleman is in the church. Probably he might love, fall in love with me. When he see me doing something, he will say I'm one of the... Is that? Today, I'm in my white, beautiful crop. So, as for today, I have to be gentle. And you are not gentle when you put on that crop and you go to worldly programs. You want everybody to see you. That's a worship there. You want everybody to see you came to the program. And the woman, the high heel, they will walk in such a way and stretch their chest. So that you know they are in time. It's a worship, if you don't know. It's a worship. And you do it to praise the whatever, images. If it is a particular dress, the people will see that kind of meat. And glory goes to that kind of meat. And you are made of God. So that made of God must be shown to God. When you come here, stretch that chest and walk and let everybody say, oh, oh. let it be too much. And let that be to his glory. If you feel like prostrating, go down. If you feel like jumping, jump. Don't let anything hold you back. Because it's God that gave him his best. And his best is for him. And he will share with no any other thing. Ah, ladies and gentlemen, let worship be spontaneous in this room. Take your time and read more about it. Thank you, ma'am. Take your time and read more about it. Take your time and do it. Worship is not, I, I, uh, I believe it. No, it's a demonstration. It comes to show. It's not something God knows my mind. Who told you God doesn't know your mind? He knows it, but he wants it outward. Worship is outward best. And you know what? There is any time worship is moving on, there are another one point that is sure in mind. That is, listen to me, that, 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 that is point two. Can you give it to me? Rewards. Rewards. I was telling you about the Koska. People were asking him, how were you able to score that goal? He said, I had in mind 
that we shall be bought a boot. Yes. Listen to me. God, when we worship him, he will reward. I was sharing with the church. In fact, last week, I really purpose to come and talk about my worship. Except that the sermon was said that I held it. I was telling you about where at a point in time we, have, we had only two women among us, pregnant women. We go to morning devotion. We come and we were giving everything to God in our lives. I was sharing with you. You know, I was telling you one product we have here, Junior. Almost everywhere I go, people didn't know that my son. Most of the pastors will meet me and then they will say, oh, I didn't know that boy is your son. I said, so kwasi wachini kuroyini na. People know him. <laughs> yeah. Th th you too. <laughs> Sometimes I tell you kwasi be careful. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the nature of worship. You can hold it back. You can hold it back. You just love doing it. You know, they went, th th this particular year, those children that pass out from uh, Tech, University of Science and Technology in Ghana, you know that the, 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 the president of Christian Association in University of Tech, the president was my son. That's Mr. Asante's son. Yeah. That's his third born. And it was some of the children that have big head. That I was talking about. The school was electing the president, um, the pres a secretary for the president, and it happened to be the one Mercy is after. Mercy's brother's son, uh, Kerry. So one school listening, you know, the president was Mr. Asante's son. They were voting for secretary, and the secretary was for our own son, Kerry. And they were all product of our school, Christian school. Was it by, by mistake? They are worshippers. They are worshippers. It comes from within. That is the reward there. Reward there. That's a reward there. Worshipping home. Worshipping family. I tell my children. I, I was talking with Samuel and the rest this week. I said, Dear ones, listen to me. Be careful with your studies. Do your everything. But we have got to an image. We don't need money for anything. If it is money that some of you are doing something, then you must think twice. Let's do it just because of a particular reason. That we were meant and brought to this country for a purpose. And I'm not saying this just for a joke that I don't want anything from it. I'm saying it that it has got to a stage God has rewarded our hard working. So I'm trying to tell you that if this morning you are jumping here and there, you are not just making some, I mean, a, a, a concert just for show. It's something that attacks with reward. One day is coming. God will sit in heaven. And not only in heaven. And even on this earth. You will be rewarded accordingly. Worship is rewardable. Worship will, will merit a reward. And I know you, you are getting it very well. Do you think how Abraham can carry a uh, sheep behind, I mean, excuse me, firewood on the very person he was going to kill? And then they will walk for three days. And after a while, go to the place of sacrifice. What, what, what was his reward? He had in mind that there is God when you give a proper worship, he will bless you. And what are the reward and the blessings? Up to now, according to Genesis 12, nobody can touch Israel. Last, uh, last, two, last week also, I was reading some things that uh, Netanyahu, is that the, uh, the prime minister of Israel? He was putting some program together, how they, are, how they even exist now. 
And that was not in the Bible days talking. He said, we exist now, this little nation, all Arab country came together to wipe us off. But within short than seven days, we pushed them back. We pushed them back. Less than seven days. He was enumerating them. He was counting their blessings and naming them one by one. And you know what that means? He said, somebody should come and test and see. I was, I was telling my wife yesterday that when Iran threatened that they will wipe Israel from the face of earth, if that time it wasn't Obama who was soft and nice and hate war, Israel would have gone first. Because by the will of war, if you threat me, it's like you will do it. And the best way for defense is offense. They would have gone and bombed first. If Israel were to what is going on with uh, North Korea, it wouldn't have waste, waste of war. I'm saying not because they are strong, though they are few, but God has rewarded Abraham for his sacrifice, and that is his worship. I'm just trying to want to bring world alive. That is not he, what we read was saying that who was and is and to come. So worship doesn't separate God. Worship makes God who he is. If we worship him, he will reward us. And I am a personal testimony of what I'm saying. Do you think I'm just succeeding here just because I'm special? I believe it's a reward. Even though I am ashes and human being, offensive just like probably worse than you. But God sees my worship and said, I will keep my son for my purpose. Yes. This is about worship. And when worship rewards turns together, we receive blessings. Are we looking for church that wants to be blessed? Are we looking for our abundance? Are we looking for God who will show up when we needed him most? And we can say this is the doing of God and not the man? Let's learn to worship God. Worship God. Sing this for me. Wherever. And let's be on our feet. The love of the truth. I'll rebel my knees to worship him, O oh God. To worship him.